Hello, everybody. This is episode nine of We Got This, Coke or Pepsi, with our very special guests, Paul and Storm. Before the episode gets underway, if you enjoy what you've been hearing so far, we're going to make more episodes. We're not going to stop, but you can help us get the word out and help get our rankings up in iTunes, which will expose us to new listeners. To do that, very easy. Just go to iTunes on your computer. Go look up We Got This with Mark and Hal, and then give us a nice rating and review. Uh, we love hearing from you guys, not only new subjects, which we have a ton of coming up, um, but also what you think of the show, uh, because we sure do enjoy making it, and we're glad that you enjoy listening to it. Also wanted to let you know, if you are a Night Vale fan, I am coming to the Minneapolis show on Saturday, May 2nd. There may still be tickets available. I don't know. You can go to welcometonightvale.com to find out. Also, if you're one of our growing audience numbers in Australia and New Zealand, Mark and I will be there with the Thrilling Adventure Hour in the middle of May. For tickets, go to thrillingadventurehour.com and look for the On Tour in the top menu, and that'll get you all the information you need about coming to see us. We're very excited to be coming to town, and we're going to have a great time. Thank you to the wonderful Mike Furman for our incredible theme song, to the transcendent Jonathan Dinerstein for the underscoring you hear at the beginning of every episode now, and as always, our most greatest thank you to Ken Plume, who does the audio mixing on every episode so that we sound good in your ear holes. And now we're going to fill those ear holes up with the great soft drink wars with special guests, Paul and Storm. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled with the fate of the world in the balance. We're here to settle once and for all. Coke or Pepsi? That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to We Got This. Yeah, thank you for uh, listening to our show. This is... um. How, this, how many episodes is this now? This is done? probably our millionth episode. Uh, we're recording them in so advance. We're, we're going to have some balloons drop here in a few minutes. Get uh, ready. One million balloons in the small room that we're in. And for the first time yes. on this show, we're very excited to have special guests with us. Special guests, uh, friends of ours that we've met through the Thrilling Adventure Hour. But you probably know them in their own right as brilliant and, and talented comedian musicians. Paul, Paul and Storm. And Storm. Hello. Hi there. Hello. I am a guest. And I'm special. <laughs> and I'm I'm a little nervous about the balloons. I can see them up there. The, don't worry. They're they're not filled with anything but helium and shaving cream. So basically yeah. when you and when you pull the cord, they will float up. They will float. Well, well that's where the shaving cream's yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> well, we tied barbells to them so they'll, they'll drop <laughs> oh, down yeah. quickly. Okay. We'll see who wins. Helium yeah. gas or solid barbells. So future episode. Sort of, uh, My sort buddy's of... on the barbells. Is that the topic this, this week? <laughs> it's yeah. like a Donkey Kong themed celebration. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, our episode today is Coke versus Pepsi. Yo, boy. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. Soft drink wars. wars. Yeah. This will be uh, easy. Wars. That really, this, there's no question. Well, we do like to start with, uh, we'll count to three and then we will all say our answer. Uh, -huh. uh frequently, I believe nearly, nearly every time Hal and I have <laughs> agreed at the top of the show, which has kept the episodes short. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so, but we'll see how it goes. I recall this time. that being a long time listener, first time special guest. Oh, <laughs> first ever special guest. <laughs> That's right. Which makes you the most special. Guest. That's yeah. right. Well, you, who is the more special guest, Paul or Storm? Oh, Mini episode. Oh, right now. Yeah, this you is you really topic. want blood, don't yeah, you? Yeah, Paul or Storm. That's our episode. <laughs> we just want to drive you guys apart. And yeah. if we can do it in 30 minutes, great. It's very efficient for <laughs> you us. You wouldn't be the first to try. <laughs> <laughs> or succeed. Or succeed, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, count to three. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Pepsi I don't know, is soda. the devil. <laughs> so we that got one. I don't drink soda. Yes, <laughs> that's already going to make this episode far more interesting. You really yes. not drink soda? Hal? Never in my life. You've um, never had this soda has never crossed Lublin lips. Only by mistake. <laughs> by, by mistake. Uh, and one you... time by prank. My dad. I was at a Bennigan's. <laughs> well, I, your dad wait, pranked wait, you wait, by wait, giving you wait, soda. Unpack yeah. this story. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Back up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So how old were you? Uh, I must have been eight or nine. Okay. And we had just seen a movie in Northeast Philadelphia. The, what movie? The AMC Orleans 8. I wish I could remember what movie it was. I want to say Legal Eagles, but I don't know that that's right. Okay. And now you already had an adversarial relationship with carbonated beverages? Uh, yeah, I just... Something By about the sensation. Yeah, I just didn't like the, the carbonated You know, when I was a kid, I was very similar there. I, it bothered me, that sort of like... Tss- as right. it would go in It was like, ah, throat. acid in my mouth. Yeah. Kind of it's thing. like that cocaine burn in the back of your throat. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that we all have that right now. Yeah, we all have so much cocaine. <laughs> you guys, we are, this episode I, is going to be three hours long, but we're going to pack it into 30 minutes. I, I, I have to say, uh, again, as a first-time guest but a long-time listener, I am surprised at the amount of illegal drugs just piled on the table between you two. Yeah, well, we. how else do you think we're going to get through this? Yeah. The thing is, Hal does not drink right. mm-hmm. alcohol. He does not drink soda. Mm-hmm. Right. He has to put something in his body. How do yeah. you hydrate? Uh, I just use cocaine. Okay. Oh, sure. I squeeze it out in a towel, <laughs> yeah. and I hope cocaine water. milk is yeah. the best. But oh, sorry, so we, di- we digress. So you were eight or nine. You'd just yeah. seen Legal Eagles and with Robert Redford and, and uh, Deborah Hanna. Winger and, and Daryl Hannah. Yes. And uh, my parents and I went to a Bennigan's. Because you were hungry for fun. We were hungry for fun. <laughs> <laughs> and where else can you go? You can get a lot of fun in a lot of places. Yeah. But when you're hungry for it. Pound yeah. for pound. Only Bennigan's. Yeah. Well, Bennigan's is the only place that'll put a giant round mozzarella stick wheel on top of a burger <laughs> and call it an Italian burger. <laughs> That's what I remember from my relations in Brooklyn. We would sit around eating oh. matzo wheels on everything. Yeah. Pickles, <laughs> spaghetti. That's how you know real cakes. Italian. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> just on a plate by itself. Just yeah. wheel upon wheel. Oh, yeah. Like pancakes. Well, I asked for the trip wheel in my house and you get a treat. You want the full trip wheel? Sometimes. If you're you're feeling plucky. So tell us more about this prank. So I, I ordered a milkshake mm-hmm. and then went to the bathroom. <laughs> the milkshake had not arrived yet. My father thought it would be funny when the milkshake came to switch the glasses uh-huh. with his Coca-Cola. And were, I, so I took, were you wearing a blindfold? Yeah. You can't I visually tell the difference well, between use, a milkshake and a Coca-Cola. They use those frosted glasses oh, at Bennigan's. Yeah. You don't know what's in there. And I didn't think. Look down in the top. Is there a lid on it? I was well, eight years old. Was, I don't inspect every beverage I'm not, about to drink. It was to make trusting sure it's good. young Hal. Yeah, you're not expecting yeah. to be ambushed by a soft drink. You're right. I wasn't raised in Hamlet. There isn't a lot of poison <laughs> going around in my family. So well, let's not call cola poison just yet. Yeah. Well, just you wait for what happens. Oh, no. So I wow. took a deep pull on the straw. Right, cause because, the, cause, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're pulling with, you're pulling you're with milkshake mm-hmm. yeah. pressure, yeah. And I got a mouthful of soda, which I not only spit out, but turned into an angry, uh, Chinese dragon and it shot out of my nose <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. And that, if there was ever a point where I had been willing to try soda yeah. after that, <laughs> I just go back to that trauma. So, so yeah, I was going to say your soda avoidance is trauma based. Yeah. I feel like we should have had. I didn't. I didn't know this about you. I feel like we should have a uh, Coca Cola and a Pepsi here with us for you to make your determination. <laughs> right oh, to be the goodness. ultimate arbiter. That's right. <laughs> it would be a true neutral party in this war. The whole you're, half hour episode would be me trying to steal myself to take. <laughs> you're the run. you're the Cola War Switzerland. <laughs> let me let me go back neutral. to uh, to our initial thoughts. Yes, uh, I could not. I did not hear what you said. Paul. I said Coke. You said Coke. I also said Coke. You pulled a, a little switcheroo on us. Yeah, uh, Storm. My my exact words were, I believe, Pepsi is the devil. So all of us are in agreement on Coke. It's the superior beverage of the two. I I would tend to agree with that. It was, but but why is it the devil? What makes it so awful? Uh, for one thing, a personal thing. I mm-hmm. can understand some people may like the taste, but there's a certain compound in Pepsi Cola in particular that I've not found in any other cola that has a taste like lime lollipops. Right? <laughs> Worst lollipops. <laughs> for me. Yeah. No, for they're me. terrible. I don't like them. Yeah. I hate them. And yeah. if, especially if I'm thirsty, if I taste a Pepsi, that just comes ringing all through my mouth, and I just want to spit it out. Now, I have other reasons to believe they're the devil, but we'll start before with that. You, before you get there, I also want to mention, so as to get sort of a, a taste bud calibration on Storm for the listeners at home, 
Storm believes that lemon uh, starbursts mm-hmm. taste like taste, hair. Taste like hair. That's correct. They do. What? Like, first of all, how much hair have you eaten? <laughs> Too much. <laughs> it's so like Hal hair. with his milkshakes and his fake sodas. And also, what sort of shampoo and conditioner are you using that is scented like lemon starbursts? <laughs> well, not my hair. <laughs> well, you don't eat your own hair. It's a G. Your hair hey, smells you gotta, terrific. You got to understand. Storm was at a Benigan's and he went to the bathroom. <laughs> his dad switched his lemon starburst with a, a glass filled with hair. <laughs> This isn't about hair, he though. He could not even finish his cheese wheel. <laughs> well, not the third one. Yeah. I just imagine a family dinner in Brooklyn with hairy mozzarella wheels everywhere. <laughs> it was the life, the old Hairy country. mozzarella wheels is easily the worst stripper down by <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, hairy mozzarella wheels. Oh, let's yeah. go. Ba-da-boom, 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 here I come. Um... Well, let's talk, let's talk why. Um, okay. I'll throw this out. I, uh, I believe, and, and I, I do have a little bit of history on this because I do like to research these. Sure. Uh, Pepsi began in 1898 mm-hmm. and yes. Coca Cola began in 1886. Yes. Uh, so that, that right there leads me to believe that Pepsi was an imitator. Total Johnny come lately the whole way. Yes. It was, Total it was, Johnny come would lately. you call it a Johnny come lately? Like the party was beginning, there was going to be a cola party and they were just there late. Or would you say that they were imposters of Coca Cola? They were imposters and their whole thing early on. And they, they really didn't even come to challenge Coke at all until later. I have also deep dived, not for this, just because mm-hmm. I cared. Because you're Storm. <laughs> because I'm Storm. It's what I do. Um, but yeah, basically Pepsi's whole pitch was, we'll give you twice as much for half the cost. And that was their big thing that got them under, under the rug with really? people. It was. They were the cheap choice. They were the cheap choice. And then later they became, um, like Coca Cola has always been out of, um, Atlanta, homegrown there. Yeah, they did a lot of funky things with their corporate structure, but it's always been kind of real that way. Mm-hmm. Pepsi, it was developed, I don't remember exactly where, because it doesn't matter, I think North Carolina. And then it basically became this product of New York Madison Avenue, where they embraced it and said, well, we can we can sell this sugar water stuff and do it better. They've monkeyed with their formula over the years. They're chasing the dragon. And even now, you look at that sales. That means they're doing opium. They are doing opium. Right. Uh, the like, secret ingredient. <laughs> in Pepsi. Well, that, well, it was, was true that cocaine existed in, in trace amounts in the original mm-hmm. Coca Cola because uh, carbonated beverages. This is something I care deeply about. Clearly, I couldn't I really, tell. Yeah, I, I these love were, these were medicines. They were. They were. Yeah. Well, there were snake well, that was oil. the Pepsi. Was, uh, yeah, was too, Pepsin to yeah to, to aid digestion. There, colas yeah. were. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, just like a bromo seltzer. Uh, these ideas that it was basically snake oil. Because it was a sensation, but eventually people just liked the stuff. They just wanted sure. to get the stuff. But Pepsi was always the Johnny come lately in that regard. And it shows in their advertising. <laughs> so let's, let me, let's talk first about, mm-hmm. um, how I don't mean to be shutting you out of this conversation. No, no, no. You have I'm, nothing to do with that's it. That's not true because I've been exposed to both of those drinks my entire life. All and, right. And Storm brought up advertising. That's the only way I can really judge these two brands. Well, let's talk about well they advertise. Let's t- then let's get away from taste. I was going to break it down into different elements. We've talked a little little bit about mm-hmm. the history, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we will skip taste for now, and we sure. will go to advertising and methods of advertising. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, I will say this: I actually grew up. In a Pepsi house, and oh, we drank oh, Pepsi. Well, hold on, let me let me let me finish here. <laughs> we grew up in a Pepsi house. It wasn't uh, it wasn't like a, a a religious thing per se. My mom just preferred Pepsi, and she bought it. We would get it though in bottles. We would get. She would go. There was a package store, as they call them in Pennsylvania. <laughs> mm-hmm. All your package needs. Where she would uh, buy a twenty four pack of the bottles. Of Pepsi, and we would just individual have those bottles, in. not yeah, like, like individual pack of two liters. Yeah, no, no individual bottles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. big we drink Pepsi. Eight <laughs> liters of Pepsi. <laughs> Here comes the wheelbarrow Pepsi. <laughs> We're gonna need we, more cheese wheels. Our house was like <laughs> our house was like Barfly, but for soda. <laughs> um, but anyway, she that that was the taste that I was used to growing up with, and I always had a very sweet tooth. Mm-hmm. And Pepsi being these, not to get into flavor too much yet, mm-hmm. but Pepsi is the sweeter product. Yeah. Uh, and I preferred that. And I didn't convert, if we want to continue the religious metaphor, until college. And uh, my palate got subtler, and I, I came around to ap- appreciate the, the flavor of Coke. But the other thing I liked about Pepsi growing up 
was Coca-Cola's advertising has always been dominated by red, red and white. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Whereas Pepsi added blue. America. And blue, Merca, first of all. <laughs> sure. And two, um, I like blue as a color better than red, and I think I subconsciously responded to that, but it seemed like a friendlier ad campaign. Somehow I found mm-hmm. Coke too off-putting between the old-timey script, which mm-hmm. they maintain to this day, and and the the just the red, you know, stop sign colors. Uh, so you that are, was, uh, that to was, the listeners, uh, Paul is actually wearing a blue shirt I am. now, and he is the friendlier of the two. And his skin is blue. <laughs> yes. I am Navi, and I see you, Abel. Uh, Could you please stop touching me on the leg with your tail? Oh, table? sorry about that. It's got a mind of its own. But that was, that was as much as I think the taste was, I, I just liked the color palette better of the Pepsi advertisement. Yeah, I mean, it does, uh, to, to a certain extent... Uh, it feels like Pepsi's kind of been the underdog forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Coca-Cola's everywhere. Like, uh, if you go to Disneyland, they have a Coca-Cola deal. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. if I go to a- almost any movie theater, mm-hmm. every cup, no matter what I put in it, is, has Coke on the outside of it. Yeah. And I, I can't stand the polar bears. Really? <laughs> I actually and I don't like the polar them. bears either. I prefer, yeah, I prefer the me. cutesy advertising, hmm. the sort of cute and nostalgic advertising of Coca-Cola to the, Pepsi choice of a new generation kind yeah. of like yeah. I feel like they hit that we are the maybe, and maybe it is that at Madison Avenue thing they hit mm-hmm. the we are the youth really right. really hard I resented so. that growing up maybe really? because well contrarian kid didn't want to just be with the <laughs> it crowd I would do whatever the it crowd wasn't doing it's like Pepsi generation well no I would drink Coke or RC or something like that oh you were the RC kid I drank all the local stuff like between the two, I prefer Coca-Cola and generally do like the, the taste of the product when I'm in the mood for a cola. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I prefer root beers and such. Although the, also the, uh, I did a little research for the 10 minutes before this podcast as well. And in <laughs> fact, at the time of the whole Pepsi, the choice of a new generation and the new Coke debacle, Pepsi was overtaking Coke in the youth demographic. Yeah. Uh, by a wide margin because it was sweeter. And that was part of the whole introduction of New Coke was they were trying to appeal to the youth market with a new flavor and a sweeter flavor. Um, so it's not just advertising bullshit. Are we allowed to curse on your podcast? Do you guys have a, a we'll, we'll, we'll bleep yet? that. We'll, we'll, yeah. bleep it. we'll bleep it. Uh, but here's the thing. So which came first? Because I, I remember New Coke. And I, I was a marketing major in college. Mm-hmm. So we studied... Like, mm-hmm. here's a oh, great blunder in marketing history. Literally a textbook example. Yeah, it, it was literally a textbook example. Then Crystal Pepsi came after New Coke, which was like, if you love this drink, you're going to really love it yeah. when we take the brown yeah. away. Well, that was <laughs> <just> racist. <laughs> right? Though, I will say, I will say, in Pepsi's defense, Pepsi is the more racially conscious of the two colas. This is, uh, there was a, in, back in the 1940s, and I'm actually going to have to, I'm going to have to look this up to get, ex- to get this exactly right. Uh, Pepsi, hold on. This may be one of those spots where we have to. Oh no, this is staying in. This is all gold. <laughs> um, right. In the 1940s, uh, Walter Mack became the president of Pepsi Cola and he realized that, uh, they had been ignoring African Americans or using, uh, black stereotypes in their advertising. So he hired Henan Smith who was an advertising executive, quote, from the Negro newspaper field. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, uh, and they began uh, advertising specifically to, uh, to African Americans. They profiled 20 African Americans uh, in a, uh, a ad campaign called Leaders in Their Fields. Uh, I bet you they profiled a lot more African Americans than that. <laughs> it was still the forties. Yes, it was still there. Was a lot of profiling when you can say a on. Negro newspaper and have that sure. not be offensive. Yeah. Uh, but they had the idea of portraying blacks in a positive light. That uh, eventually they got death threats from the KKK. Wow. Yeah. And um, and they would use that as a selling point. They would be like, "Hey, we are not the racist drink." Uh, <laughs> Coca Cola. Uh, the the chairman of Coke backed a segregationist governor, Herman Talmadge, uh, for the uh, governor of Georgia, who was a a member of the Ku Klux Klan. Mm-hmm. Um, and big uh, shock. 
Right. That's part of the Atlanta heritage, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a very, very, very southern. Doesn't that go to its down home sort of roots of being in Atlanta, which has certainly come a long way since yeah. the late nineteenth century? <laughs> but in in yeah. some ways, maybe has not progressed as far as other uh, areas around the country slash world slash Georgia. <laughs> and it is saying that this is something that that the pep the PepsiCo did that was an initiative that Coke never did. That Coke never did, yeah. and and even beyond that. They were, uh, Coca Cola's, uh, Coca Cola was reluctant to hire black people in their bottling. That, that is a stain upon Coca Cola. That is a stain. That is a stain. Even those bears they use in the advertising. Yeah, all, all white. They're stained. They're all stained. White. But you guys, there's a happy ending to this story. When that president left in 1950, uh, the Pepsi company decided they did not want to be known as a black drink oh, and stopped you, oh, Pepsi. They show their so, evil okay. stripes so again. Any any inkling toward Pepsi over Coke that I had uh, vanished immediately. See, that's worse. It, it, that's worse. It shows how little integrity PepsiCo had. Yes. <laughs> right? At least Coca-Cola. You are violently against I Pepsi. I am. I really am. Are you saying that the, the PepsiCo are flip-floppers? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. The worst type of floppers. <laughs> now, uh, what about your history, uh, Mark, with, with Coke versus I, Pepsi? I grew up in Tennessee. And in Tennessee, everything is Coke because oh right, all, uh, because we're so right, close to Atlanta. And when you refer to a soda, yeah, when you, you refer to, yeah, when you refer to a soda, Coke. you ask for a Coke. They say what kind? You say a Sprite. Um, and <laughs> the only time I ever heard Pepsi was when someone was saying we don't have Coke as Pepsi, okay? or when a communist drove yeah. through town, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a um, van full of hippies. What are they uh, drinking? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, but by the time I was in high school, everybody was drinking Mountain Dew, right. which uh, which now they have a Mountain Dew flavor that is Dorito flavored Mountain oh, Dew. Oh God, is that so, not which is yeah. horrifying? I mean, yeah. um, but I will say, I am not a huge nowadays. I'm not a huge Coca Cola drinker because yeah. it's so. It feel I, I can't even imagine a regular Pepsi because Coca Cola feels so. I feel like my teeth are disappearing. I have a serious, serious problem with Diet Coke. Oh, no, Meaning yeah. I probably go through, I could go through easily a two liter of Diet Coke a day. It's mm-hmm. not Coke Zero, you are a Diet Coke not guy. Not Coke Zero, I'm yeah. a Diet Coke oh. guy. Because they are entirely different beasts. Very different flavors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My father was a Diet Coke guy yeah. for many years. We'll still drink a Diet Coke. But he would get those six packs, the, the six plastic bottles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he would drink them all in the morning on the way and then probably drink another one on the way back. And he would throw the empties... He would screw the top. I got to throw the empties in the back seat. So if if he, my mother, and I would go somewhere, I would get in, and it would be it would be like, uh, like the end of Real Genius with the popcorn came out of the house. I imagine it would be kind of fun for a kid. It would feel like the ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese, yeah, except everything's sharp and yeah, it's sort of slightly sticky. sticky yeah. Yeah. Low hey. sticky ball pit. Yeah. <laughs> I'll also say that both. Coke and Pepsi are shadows of themselves for the high fructose corn syrup. Now, I know mm-hmm. some, peop- some people don't think that matters, mm-hmm. but there's a certain zappiness to the flavor, like with the Mexican Coke that you get, the one that's actually produced in Mexico, mm-hmm. which is which uses the cane sugar. Or- can you get that uh, readily in D.C.? You can find in- it. Uh, in the last five years, they've actually it, it's been a lot easier generally everywhere to be able to find it. Good. For those who don't know, Paul and Storm live on the East Coast, yeah. uh, Storm in D.C. and Paul in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and Southern California, it's been always really easy to get, uh, yeah. Mexican. Well, yeah, you're right here by yeah, Mexico. We're, we're two and a half hours yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a, there's been a movement. You see a lot of sodas that are made with, with sugar. And mm-hmm. frankly, you know, I, I would pay more and I do for a soda that has genuine sugar. Uh, just maybe not drink it as often, but that doesn't suit, I think, either Oof. PepsiCo or Coca Cola. No. You'd be drinking it less. Just right. charge me twenty bucks for a, for a bottle. I'm I'm cool with that. Please do not charge any of us twenty dollars for a bottle. <laughs> I, w- <laughs> I drink far too much Diet Coke. That would be where all of my money goes. Well, there's no sugar in that, so you don't have to worry about it. That's true. I don't. Have, the only thing I have to worry about is the aspartame and the. Fetal kettle alan, phenyl kettle alanine, which I noticed on the back of the of the can once. Wondered what it was. Decided I didn't so care because no. I like diet coke. Is like a it's... super friends villain or something. Uh, yes, <laughs> you phenyl kettle alanine. I wouldn't drink anything with fetal as one of the <laughs> ingredients. Um, here's here's something in favor of Coke. Mm-hmm. As somebody who drinks neither. Um, <laughs> the first time I went to the world of Coca Cola, which is in like 1991. Uh, the, the tour. This is the and, Atlanta Coke yes. theme park. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you've never been there, Coke is a giant complex. 
It's it's right near the aquarium yeah. uh, in um, Millennium Park, I think yeah. is the, mm-hmm. the name of the area. The log flume is also really sticky. <laughs> yeah. It actually doesn't move. It yeah. Yeah. You just sit in a log for 10 minutes <laughs> yeah. and they say, get out, the next people are here. Yeah. Yeah. For an extra 10 bucks, you can do yeah. it without the yeah. log. <laughs> but they used to, they, they have a huge, the, the end of, uh, before the gift store, you get to a large area where you can taste almost every flavor of Coke and, and all of their brands that they produce, not only in the United States, but around the world. And the, in the, in the nineties, it was like you would press the button for the, for the soda that you wanted and you would see soda shooting through the air. Cool. And, it would go, bring, bring, bring. and that machine was so cool <laughs> that I decided to try like an orange. Uh, drink of some sort, some uh-huh. sort of orange soda. And then you cried like I a took- seven-year-old who <laughs> yeah. was getting bubbles in his throat for the first time. I took a sip and I was like, nope, this burns. Why am I doing this? Why would I do this to myself? Uh, I've also been to that world of Coca-Cola, and when I was a kid, there was a thing we used to do, and it's got a horrifying, uh, insensitive name. It's called a suicide. Did you guys ever make a suicide? No, no. A yeah. suicide is when you go up to the soda fountain, yeah. and you put a little splash of everything. We would do that, but we weren't quite as morbid about it. No, no, yeah, we called it a suicide. It was just we- called a bunch of sodas in a cup. Yeah, yeah that's, that's how we work. It was called a yuck. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, I, and I remember at the world of Coca-Cola thinking to myself, I am going to make the ultimate <laughs> suicide. <laughs> and it was just a... Like teeny little droplet of it, because there are there are over a hundred flavors. There are actually taps for each one. There are taps for each yeah. one. Wow! And I discovered in, and I was also going around and tasting. First of all, that suicide tasted horrifically yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah, sure. the, by the time you were done, like the cup was glowing green and there was yeah. smoke pouring off yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a it looked like a haunted house where they would drop dry ice <laughs> yeah. into a goblet. And yeah, dry my potion, dearie. <laughs> accidentally spilled some on the floor and it ate through yeah. it like right. alien blood. Um, but I discovered the two. <laughs> Two worst flavors that Coca-Cola has ever produced, in my opinion. Uh, this was in high school, so my palate, much like yours, did not develop until later. Well, you were a Mountain Dew guy at the time. Uh, I was never the Mountain Dew guy. All of my buddies were Mountain Dew guys. Yeah. I thought it was a redneck drink. Up high. Up high. Yeah. Uh, high fives. High fives. <laughs> high fives for rednecking out with Mountain Dew. Um, but there were the two flavors that I vividly remember hating were one called, uh, lychee mellow from, uh, from somewhere in Africa. I don't remember what country it was from, but it was so, so sweet. It tasted like, it tasted like somebody added, uh, a spoonful of peanut butter to a pound of wet sugar. Mm, sell that. Uh, that one was terrible. And the other one was... Isn't that, isn't uh, that one of the desserts at Guy Fieri's restaurant? It is. <laughs> <laughs> like, now we know what donkey sauce is. Yeah. <laughs> Come on <laughs> down. Get sugar. your donkey sauce. We got a pound of wet sugar and a tablespoon of peanut butter. Okay, so Soak the- it all down with a Mountain Dew. <laughs> so uh, Lychee Death was Lychee one Death of them. Uh, yeah. was one. And uh, the other one was called Beverly. And Beverly was from Italy. And it was bitters was the oh. flavor. Well, there I got to say, I would probably enjoy that. You ever had a soda called Moxie? I've never had Moxie. It's a main product, and it has that bitter taste that, if you look at the ingredient list, it is that trace ingredient in, like, you know, I guess an old-fashioned that mm-hmm. you put a bat dash of bitters. Yeah, dating back again to when these beverages were medicinal. Sure. Well, and now that's one of my favorite drinks. When I go into a bar, if I need to have a spacer between beers, mm-hmm. I will get a uh, glass of soda water with a splash of bitters and a squeeze of lime. Mm-hmm. And... Oddly, I, I assume that's what Beverly tasted like. But to me, as a kid, right. I, it was the polar opposites of one was impossibly sweet and one was the opposite of it. I yeah. liked my my drink somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Hmm. Did you try mixing the two? Uh, no, I bet it would have been. It would have just turned into Coca Cola. <laughs> yeah. That's what they mean. That's the Bruce Banner uh, Incredible Hulk poster. <laughs> That's the version for Coca Cola. You wouldn't like me when I'm drinking lychee. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like road trip to me. It looks like we need to go down to yeah. uh, Atlanta and do a little, uh, little, little Coke spritzing. Yeah, we'll do now, a live. We'll periscope a live tasting. Now, I will say uh, two things. First of all, uh, I am a huge fan. Uh, there was a long time I was a big fan of the vanilla Coke when that came out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was Love very that. good. And I, I switched mostly, given my choice, I will, I will do a, a cherry Coke. Sure. Uh, yeah. Which I find very good. Uh, Jennifer but loves that. Even better than that is, uh, the increasingly 
prevalent magic. I, I called them the magic infinity so, so soda machines. Yes. You, you know, they've, they've got basically every Coke product in there and then mm-hmm. you choose one. It'll give you a whole range of uh, yes. flavor additives. It as feels well. like this is the only thing from back to the future part two that they figured out and yes. actually given us. <laughs> These are we don't have hoverboards. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I love, I have my eyes light up when I see those machines because oh, I, great. I like to find, find my new yeah, diddle and daddle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in fact, the cherry vanilla Coke is in fact my current favorite that I could only get at those. Uh, oh yeah, those places. I mean, oh, I could yeah. buy a ch- I could buy a cherry Coke and a vanilla Coke, and I could mix them in a glass. But who wants to do that much work? Yeah. Well, and they also and now they have you. Can, they've actually got them bottled, I believe. I don't know yeah. if they have cherry vanilla, but I'm also a Dr Pepper guy. I always yeah, like Dr Dr Pepper. Pepper's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, Dr. yeah. And, uh, and they have they have come out with. Diet cherry vanilla Dr Pepper, and I thought that yeah, is that is too many modifiers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on one beverage. When Dr Pepper already claims to have one million ingredients, right. <laughs> unfortunately for all of them, like like sales of carbonated beverages generally have just been plummeting. I um, didn't know that because of yeah. all the sugar waters that are now and the well, yeah, drinks. it's all so, yeah. muscle moo and energy drink and this and that mm, coconut water. The kids, yeah, the kids are drinking coconut water. Yeah. They they will have no truck with Coca Cola, uh, but still, Coca Cola I think is two to one over Pepsi Cola. It used to be Diet Coke was the number two. Pepsi actually displaced Diet Coke as the number two carbonated beverage. This was like when the, within the past month. Oh, really? But the whole segment, and that's where Pepsi is strong. Like. They realized, I think, a long time ago, yeah, our cola kind of sucks, but we got Mountain Dew, and we got this, we got all these other great beverages. We also have a deal with Taco Bell and KFC. And that's part of why they're evil. <laughs> like now, and that was Pepsi's, or Coca-Cola's game, and something that made them a little evil. They used to lock down all the restaurants to these long-term contracts, and Pepsi could not get in. Mm-hmm. So now... It's like Iron Man, the song, you know, has come back. I am Pepsi Man. <laughs> Locking down everything with my contracts. Yeah. My brand. Well, so, all right. So let's come. I think this is like a foregone conclusion here. But yeah. let's let's come to our final ruling. Great. Sure. With our guest adjudicators, Paul and Storm. Uh-huh. Uh, Pepsi versus Coke. What do you say? Coke wins. Coke, because Coke adds life. Uh, yeah, I have to. I have to go with Coca Cola. People of the world who drink Pepsi Cola, your time has ended. <laughs> <laughs> go get Coca Cola, and I'll. Here's one where I can weigh in: in those magical boxes, which only Coke makes, not Pepsi. Uh, I can get a nice lemonade from Minute Maid, yeah. or a nice high C orange drink, oh, which was God. at its best. Uh, whose bubbles cooler. aren't gonna bother you? Yeah, bubble, I can be unbothered. <laughs> Did if you say I, Ecto Cooler? Ecto Cooler is is high C orange drink turned green. Is it really? It is. So, you just you, blew my mind. If you go Sorry. to a Pepsi place and you want a lemonade, guess what you're getting? Tropicana, but not the good Tropicana. <laughs> you're getting their weird watered down sugar water version. Oh, it's so sad. even in their subsidiaries, they failed the American people and people all around the world. Shame mm. on you, Pepsi. Shame. Co. Shame. So we'd also like to thank our sponsor, uh, Pepsi. Yes. <laughs> and we'd like to apologize. The choice for a fresh new generation. Yes. <laughs> when you're enjoying your mozzarella wheels at home, <laughs> have a sugary Pepsi. Pour it on top. See what happens. Nothing. You can't destroy those wheels. <laughs> Not even through eating. That's Italian. Uh, well, we'd like to thank our guests, yeah. uh, Paul and Storm, yes, for you're... coming and playing with us today. Is there anything you, like to, you want to promote? anything or i want to slag on pepsi for another hour <laughs> great <laughs> we'd like to so announce good. our new podcast storm slagging on pepsi <laughs> <laughs> That's, you can find us storm slagging on pepsi.com uh you can also find us on twitter storm slagging on pepsi instagram uh probably uh, periscope snapchat uh, periscope and tune in i'll be slagging on pepsi <laughs> Perfect. And uh, thank you again for listening. And if you want to check us out on Twitter, we are uh, at We Got This Tweets. Yep. Uh, at Hal Lublin. At Mark Gags. At Paul and Storm. And at, well, just JoeCoCruise.com. Yeah. Uh, yes, if you haven't checked Joko out Cruise. Uh, Joko Cruise, there's another one of those coming up next year. Uh, yes, February 21st, 28th, 2016. It's a great uh, floating music and comedy festival with gaming and lots of cool stuff. And it's selling super fast. So by the, by the time this podcast yeah, comes it out, be it may out. be almost sold out. Mm-hmm. So. And is, is Ball Pit available for Ball everybody? Ball Pit, our latest CD, yeah. is available uh, everywhere you can buy music online. Yeah, I forget sometimes we're a band, That's too. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly we just make cruises and take 
a dump on Pepsi products. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, there's Woodstock coming up. In yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we, uh, we run, uh, we co-run with Adam Savage and Will Wheaton a year- annual variety show in San Diego right around the time of San Diego Comic Con. It's called Woodstock. It's on Thursday, July 7th, whatever that Thursday is at the Balboa Theater. Tickets will be on sale probably by the time this podcast comes out or very shortly thereafter. And yes. It's always a great time. So it's a heck of a show. Thanks. It is. It is. It's fantastic. So if you're going to be in the Comic Con area, you should check them out uh, and go to palmstorm.com. Does yep. that have good information yeah, for them? Yeah, we live there too. Yeah. Uh, so you should check them out. They're amazing. Uh, and until next time, everybody. Don't worry. We got this. We got this. We got this.